Hey everyone, RJ here with CV Tech, and today I'll be discussing the Pixel 4 XL. Had this phone for around three weeks now, using it daily. So I'm gonna give you my thoughts on it, a little mini review, and all that kind of good stuff. Also, something that I found out about the Pixel 4 XL, so stay tuned for that coming up here in this video. And I want to say just for a little bit, get all the negativity you've heard about this phone out of your mind. A lot of the nitpicking that's been said about it and all that kind of stuff. We'll discuss all of that here in this video. Let's go ahead and get it started. Okay, so I've had the Pixel 4 XL now for around three weeks. I have been using it as a daily phone since I've got it. My main SIM card has been the phone. And it's been a very good experience. So in this video here, uh, I'm going to give you a few things about it that I like, some things about it that I don't like, and we'll kind of go from there. So whatever pops in my mind to say about it is what I want to see in this video here uh, and all that kind of good stuff. So first of all, I'm going to give you the specs of the phone. Now the phone runs the Snapdragon 855 processor. It has 6 gigabytes of RAM. This one here has 128 gigabytes of storage. There is a 64 gigabyte variant as well. Has a quad HD display, 6.3 inch, I do believe. And the screen looks really, really nice. I mean, the screen is beautiful. It's very, very vibrant and punchy. It's about 50% brightness right now. I'm in a well lit room and you know, 50%, I can see the screen just fine. It doesn't get, it does not get the brightest outdoors. I will explain that here a little bit later on. But in general lighting, 50%, I can see the screen just fine. No issues whatsoever. So, so the screen looks good. And the overall design of the phone and the build of the phone just looks and feels nice. I love the way it has that matte back back here. Yeah, I think it has Gorilla Glass 6 on the front or 5 or 6 on the front and 5 or 6 on the back. I'm not really sure. I want to say Gorilla Glass 6 on the front and Gorilla Glass 5 on the back. I could be backwards on that, but anyway. And you got the aluminum side here um, with this really nice, kind of like a kind of like a plastic polycarbonate side here, which gives it some grip, which is really nice, but it is aluminum. So a really nice feeling, really nice looking device here, as you can see. Now, as far as battery life goes, this one here has a 3,700 milliamp hour battery. Now, I have heard reports of the smaller Pixel 4 with a 2,800 milliamp hour battery being very poor and not really getting that good of battery life. However, I can't comment on that because I don't own a Pixel 4, but the Pixel 4 XL has had, I've had really good battery life out of this phone. My very first charge, uh, I got 40 hours of standby time and around seven and a half to eight hours of screen on time. Now, battery life with everybody is gonna fluctuate up and down because everybody uses their phones differently. We all know that. Uh, but as far as my usage, I've got as much as 10 hours screen on time and as little as five and a half to six hours screen on time. It depends on how much you wanna game on your phone, how much you're, you know, you know, watching YouTube or if you're watching Netflix or whatever the case may be, it's going to all, of course, determine how your how much battery life your phone's going to get. But I'm getting an average of one and a half to two, almost two days with between seven to eight hours screen on time. And honestly, that's a really good battery life in my opinion. I mean, 3,700 milliamp hour, there's been a lot of complaints about that. But I believe the optimization, the stock Android, it just, it just, it's just good. Okay, I've had, I've had phones, I got phones with batteries bigger than this that does not get as good a battery life as this phone does. So battery life gets, is really good on this device and I've not had any complaints with it. But of course it will vary for everybody. Now as far as cameras go on the Pixel 4 XL, we know these are some of the best cameras around, okay? And this is no different. Pixel 4 XL has amazing cameras, front and rear. It uh, has that night sight, which is just amazing. The astrophotography that's thrown in is pretty cool as well. Uh, video quality is really good on this phone. Is it the best on the market? I doubt it, but it does a really good job recording. You can record in 4K 30 frames per second, 1080p 60 frames per second, and honestly, all I really ever use is 1080p 
60 frames per second. I know there's a lot of people complaining about 4K 60 and the phone not having it. Honestly, uh, when it comes when it comes to that, I mean, you're if you watch YouTube videos on a cell phone, not many can watch in 4K to begin with. And if you watch it on a TV, most of your streaming services, other than a few shows here and there, most of them are being shown at 1080p, and everybody's fine with that. So why do you really need 4K60 for a YouTube video? I mean, really. I mean, I know that it would be nice to have it for some, but honestly, 1080p, 60 frames per second is just fine. 4K60, too much storage being you know, to be taken up. I just don't see the purpose and need of it. That's just my personal opinion. I know everyone's different and everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But that's my opinion. What it, what it records in, to me, is fine. And I believe that the average consumer will probably feel the same way. Now I'm going to discuss what phones were originally made to do. And it's hardly ever hit on anymore. And that's phone call quality. How is reception? How is the speaker phone? And stuff like that. Well, I can sit here and say that phone call quality is good on this device. Uh, everyone that I talk to, they can hear me just fine. I can hear them just fine. It's crystal clear. There's no issue whatsoever. Speakerphone quality is not the loudest. If you're in a quieter environment or maybe an area that's not very noisy, it'll be fine. But if you're in a busy area where a lot of noise, you're going to have a hard time hearing someone using speakerphone on this device. But in a regular environment, no issues. It does get loud enough. Now, reception um, on the Pixel 3a XL and the Pixel 4 using the Verizon network here in my area, I don't get very good reception. Now, I'm not sure if it is a Pixel thing or if it's an Android 10 thing. And the reason why I say that is the Pixel 3a XL that I have when I had Android 9, in this exact same spot, I would get almost full service on Verizon. F three to four to five bars of service, no problems. When I got Android 10, it went, it dropped down to like one bar, maybe two bars in the exact same spot. So as far as reception goes, I'm not sure if it is a Pixel thing or if it's an Android 10 thing. So if it's something dealing with Android 10, that needs to be addressed, but I know on Android 9, on the 3A XL, I had very good coverage. Uh, a lot, I mean, I've not had any drop calls, nothing like that on this on the Pixel 4 or the 3A XL on Android 10, but there has been some cutouts here and there, but, I, but that did not happen until Android 10, so I can't really sit here and say for sure if the reception deal is a Pixel thing or Android 10. If y'all have any experience with that yourself, let me know in the comments. I would love to know uh, if you're having the same issues on any phone with Android 10. Now, the build and design of this phone. I love how this phone looks, okay? When I first seen it, I was like, eh, I'm gonna have my mm, about it. But after having it for three weeks, using it, the style is really growing on me. And I've heard some complaints about the phone's not durable. If you sit here and bend it, it's going to sit here and crack and all that kind of stuff. Well, come on. Who's going to be sitting there, all their pressure, you know, bending a phone, waiting for it to crack? Okay, the phone is made of glass. If you drop it, most likely it's going to shatter the front or the rear or both. That comes with any phone. I don't care if it's Apple. I don't care if it's Samsung. Whatever. Some phones will snap when they're bent and some phones won't. However, who is going to be sitting around with a $1,000 phone bending it trying to get it to snap? Nobody's going to do that in real life. So why should that why should that be, be brought up from day to day? This phone, I mean, this phone to me feels durable. It looks good. Um, this up here, I wasn't too crazy about it at the beginning. It's kind of grown on me now a little bit. And before anybody starts saying, well, you know... Uh, you know, Google copied, you know, Apple. Apple had this design. Well, if you want to really back up a little ways, Apple copied it from Huawei. But that's never, of course, brought up because, you know, it's Apple. But, yeah, Huawei had it first and Apple and now Google and waiting for Samsung to follow along those same lines. Probably coming up next year. See what happens on that. But um, overall, I mean, getting back to the point, um, I think it's a well-designed phone. I love how 
you know, it has this black accent here on the side. The camera back here having that black accent with a white back here just looks really good. Uh, has a little accent here on the power button as well. I just I like it. I love the way the phone feels in the hand, the design. Hey, some like it, some don't. If you do, awesome. If you don't, awesome. You got your own opinion. I got my own opinion. That's my thoughts on the design. Now, I know this might be a pro and a con for some, but for me, it's a pro, and that is it's stock vanilla Android, okay? It's a Pixel, it's Google, it's stock Android. That's the way it should be, and that's the way this phone is, okay? It's just a very easy experience. It's just a very simple, it's very simplistic for anybody, you know, wanting to try a phone out. You know, if you're, if you're an Apple and you want to try Android, I highly recommend Pixel. I think it's a great phone. You can call me whatever you want to call me. I don't care. I, ever since I got the 3A XL, I have really, really enjoyed using the Pixels. It does everything that I want it to do. And stock Android, you know, I, think, I think it helps with battery life, not having as much stuff to worry about on a phone. That's just my thoughts and my opinions there. For me, it's a pro. I like stock Android. Now there is a few things about the Pixel 4 XL that I wish it had that it don't. And first is the headphone jack. I mean, come on. I'm glad they brought the headphone jack back in the 3A and 3A XL. There's plenty of space on this phone for a headphone jack. Why they didn't put it on here, I don't know why. There are still some of us who like using wired headsets. I mean, give us that. I mean, what's I mean, what's the deal? There, there's not even a dongle in the box, so I mean, you know, you just got to go buy one or whatever. But no headphone jack. I think that's something that is. I mean, it's easily put on a phone, and why I don't have it, I don't know. But that's one thing that I do miss about this phone is no headphone jack. To some, they don't care. Personally, me, I like a headphone jack. Now talking about price, yes. The phone is very expensive. Base model being 800, the top model being 1000. It's a lot of money for any phone. I said it before and I'll say it again. I don't think that any phone is worth $1000. I just don't never have thought it and I never will think it. I think that $1000 for any phone is just too much and I find it very hard to justify paying $500 for any phone. That's just my personal opinion. But it is what it is. It's a flagship phone. It has the latest specs. It has. It's going to get all the OS updates for the next three or four years. All the security patches, all that kind of stuff that you know, comes along with the Pixel phones. Uh, but it is expensive. I mean, I'm not going to you know, disagree with you on that. It's, a, it's an expensive phone. If you think it's worth it, if you don't think it's worth it, I mean, you know, it's just whatever. You, it's just whatever you think. Um, but in my opinion, no phone is worth. That kind of money my personal opinion if you are someone wanting to try out a pixel but you can't afford something like this i highly recommend a 3a or 3a xl them phones are selling for a really good price right now uh online and they are awesome phones they're great phones and i recommend those as well as i do the pixel 4 xl i mean the 3a xl has been a great phone the only reason why I stopped using that phone was because I got the Pixel 4 XL. So um, price, yes, it is steep. Um, and I don't think that any phone is worth uh, $1,000. I don't care who makes the phone. Um, but if you want to try a Pixel out and can't afford this th this price point, the 3A or 3A XL, I would definitely check out. Now going back to the screen, the screen, like I may mentioned earlier, it's nice, bright, vibrant, it's crystal clear. It's a very, very beautiful display. However, in bright sunlight, it doesn't get very bright. 100% and it still is not the easiest to see. Um, you know, that's been a complaint of a lot of people. It's a valid one in my personal opinion because it does not get very bright out in the sunlight. Now, like I said, right here in this lighting, um, around 50% brightness and it's bright enough to where I can see everything just fine on the phone but I'm in a house with just a normal light in here and of course it's very very visible but going out in bright sunlight you know, it might be a little bit hard to see uh, and one more thing I want to hit on as well this is not much of an issue with me 
I know a lot of people are complaining about it, but it is the whole face unlock, okay? And the whole deal about having your eyes shut and the phone unlocking, yeah, that is an issue that I believe Google's working on. I believe that there will be a software update to fix that issue, but come on, let's be honest. If you're that worried about somebody, about somebody taking your phone, put it in front of your face and unlocking it, then you just use a pin pattern or password and leave face leave face off right now until they get it fixed. I mean, if you're that worried about it, seriously, um, you know, I do miss the the fingerprint scanner. I wish that was still a thing, but you know, it ain't it is what it is what it is. But I believe that that's going to be something that Google will fix. And that should be an issue for much longer. Hopefully, they'll get it fixed, you know, for everyone, you know, that's worried about it. So, hopefully, Google will get right on that and fix that up. And like I may mention earlier, there is something about the Pixel 4 XL that I have found out. And what I found out is that it is an amazing phone, okay? It's an excellent phone. I know that's not what you expected to hear, but that is the truth. It's a, it's a great phone, an excellent phone. And... You know there, you know, and there's not there's nothing to really sit here and complain about if you actually use the phone. It's just a really good experience. So with that being said, I'm done for now. This was helpful and informative in any way at all. Hit that like button. Any questions that you may have, leave it down below and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notifications. I'd appreciate it. Y'all have a good one, and thanks for watching.